Court Memorial Stadium is just a special place. Navy rolls. Undescribable. Navy holds on. Our stadium always gives me some type of extra energy. Navy has its biggest upset victory in 32 years. It's definitely different than I think a lot of other college stadiums. The history and who we're playing in front of. 15 straight home victories. Navy stands alone. The mid seek more home magic against Willie Fritz and his hungry Tulane Green Wave. Curtains up. The home opener has arrived. The colors fly just a little bit higher at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. The home opener is here and with it, conference play. The Navy midshipmen welcome in the Tulane Green Wave. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Zadak alongside the College Football Hall of Famer in Randy Cross and a new quarterback of sorts for the Navy midshipmen. He was indoctrinated with the Army-Navy game last year, but it's now truly Zach Gaby's team. Well, it's been handed to him. He's taken it. He's actually very much won the job. And just as Ricky Dobbs and Keenan Reynolds and Will Worth, he's going to have an opportunity to run up a lot of yards. And how teams handle this option, it varies. Now. Did he make his decision really, really well last week? Did Zach Aby do everything perfectly? You know, no, not really. He didn't. But there's a lot of things about the way this kid plays the position in this offense that you got to love. And one thing's for sure, he is tougher than nails. Also tough and laden with opportunities and decisions, Jonathan Banks, his counterpart, quarterback for Tulane, a long and winding road, two junior colleges, Kansas State in between, now Tulane. You know, at times you'll almost be saying, I wonder what they look like side by side, because they are very similar styles of quarterbacks. They're power runners. Uh, he may be a little bit more of an athlete from the standpoint of pure speed, but he throws the ball extremely well. It is crisply cool, air temperature at 69. The breeze makes it even more inviting. An autumnal field, as you adeptly put it earlier. That's and a it great word, like, isn't it? it? It is. Autumnal. It feels like fall. It feels like football. And Willie Fritz closing in on a quarter century of coaching. He's won a couple of national championships in the JUCO ranks, went to FCS title games in back-to-back -back years at Sam Houston State. He's trying to turn things around for Tulane, while Ken Niamatololo, the winningest head coach in Navy history, 8-1 and one in home openers over those first nine years. There's a, there's a certain consistency to the way that not only he acts, but the way his football teams play, the way they prepare. The way they get ready for an opponent. Uh, consistency would probably be the number one term because this has been a very consistent program even since he was the offensive coordinator for Paul Johnson. Georgia Tech certainly gave Tennessee all it could handle last week. Tulane won the toss, elected to defer to Navy, trying to replace Dyson Romine, top three in program history, averaged 26 per kick return. As Trey Walker is the deep end, Zach Block with the boot. Walker lets it fly into the checkered end zone at a touchback as we're underway. Time now for the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Cal, I've missed you. He's back. He had a great summer, by the way. He went to Europe. <laughs> at quarterback for the Navy midshipman, Zach A.B. As we teased earlier, his first career start came in the Army-Navy game. He's the first quarterback in the history of that series to have his first start come in the greatest rivalry in sport. And 100 yards, over 100 yards passing and 200 rushing, only the second quarterback in the history of this program to put up those kind of numbers. A.B. follows and keeps. John Marbley smacks him, and he earns a couple of yards. Let's take a look at the other starters, including at wideout Tyler Carmona. Big grab last week. Yeah, big touchdown grab for Carmona. But today, really a challenge for the blocking. He's going to have to do outside. As usual, Navy receivers block extremely well. Big part of the Navy triple option offense. Steered by Ivan Jasper, now in his 18th year with the program. And the run up the middle rumbles right into Jared Franklin, that nickel back safety he earns about the 38 yard line will be excuse me the 34 yard shy here are the starters for Tulane including Marbley who's bought in this year he's brought some leadership for the Green Wave yeah and Aruna up front very important to that fullback run you saw so successful that first play that's the one part the first part of the triple option 
You don't stop that against Navy. You will see that regularly. And third and one. A.B. keeps. He's got it. Right through the arm tackle. Finally fouled inside of the 15. Quinlan Carroll, the D.N., chases him down. Shedding would-be hitters. Well, running a little bit of a follow play right behind his fullback high. Breaks that first tackle and then gets run down. This is what Navy loves to do, though. Big play, get right on the line of scrimmage. Probably snap it quick. 54-yard run. Josh Walker still in at fullback. Roderick Teamer, the strong safety, was that second would-be hitter. Called by Willie Fritz, one of the better safeties. He's been around for some time, and he's been at a lot of stops. Navy made a miss. Tries to keep to the edge, and he cannot find it. Awarded for a loss of a little more than a yard. Harry Nickerson, the cornerback. Great penetration coming from the play side, disrupting the blocking. And you see the, the relationship between the quarterback and the running back. Usually it's, it's perfect in this offense. Just got a little out of sorts, so A.B. had nowhere to go with that ball to pitch it out there at the end. He had to eat it and try to do so, something with it himself. Nickerson so experienced. A.B. again denied. Ball. Tulane claims it has it. And it looks like progress stopped first. And that's a theme for both of these teams. They, they know we, all, we both like to run. We both like to control the ball. We both like to run time off the clock. Turnovers are gargantuan when you're playing each other in these styles of offenses. Because possessions are everything. Possessions can be points. Nine third down conversions last week. A.B. loading up. Picked off. Perry Nickerson with the INT. Earns an extra few yards, weaving to the 10. A.B. trying to fit that ball in, trying to actually kind of float the ball in. But there was nowhere to fit that thing in. Nickerson did a really nice job of being underneath on the receiver, trying to get it to Carmona. Nickerson sloughed a little bit back and got into that area, intermediate area, that A.B. was trying to throw into. That was a good experience play by Nickerson of almost setting up the quarterback, making him think he had somewhere soft to put that ball. A pick for Tulane now in nine of its last 11 games. It's option, but it's out of the gun. Zone runs. And a giant gash for Dontrell Hilliard. Micah Thomas, DJ Palmore finally slowing down at around the 27. Right up the middle, Corey Dublin getting a nice block. Briggs Jr., great execution. Maybe a little bit different formation. It may look, the window dressing may look a little different. It's still an option. And the fullback dive, a paramount concern for Navy DC Dale Pearson. Hard cadence, delayed handoff, and the line collapses, yielding little. Tyler Sales in on that hit as we check our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. The quarterback is Jonathan Banks, who was at Kansas State when the quarterback job opened up late September 2015, contracted mononucleosis. His next destination was a second junior college. Now he's at the Green Wave. Yeah, I like watching this kid. I'm curious to see how he does in the American this year against some of these defenses. I think he's going to give them fits. Second and ten. Hilliard. Not a whole lot. The Navy defense strong. Micah Thomas with the contact. The rest of the offense for the Green Wave. The man in the middle up front is Junior Diaz. Uh, Diaz, number 51 right there on your screen. As usual in most offenses, everything spins off that center. Especially in these option, option offenses, you've got to help the quarterback identify the defense and get the blocking scheme together with that offensive line because of the defense that they present you. He got injured against Navy last year. That cost him the balance of the season. Third and eight. Extra runner, designed quarterback run, slipping through the first hit, but not the second. D.J. Palmore, who led Navy in tackles for loss and sacks last year, 
knocks him back about four yards. Look at the confusion in the middle of this offense. It all gets just, just, sub, just shoved back into the quarterback's face. See the inverted bubble? That bubble was kind of like that, and that was right into the quarterback's face. Zach Block with the kick. Craig Scott, fair catch made at his own 37. So Navy turned it over on its first possession. Let's see what Ken Niamatololo's unit and quarterback Zach Abey can muster the second time around to score this game. Scoreless game, Navy and Tulane. Welcome back to Annapolis, where emotions are running very high these days for Ivan Jasper, his son Jaron, and the rest of their family. For more, let's go down to Sheehan's Stanford Bridge. Okay. Before the start of his high school football season, Ivan's son Jaron had a routine physical. During that physical, it was discovered that Jaron had a serious heart condition. He underwent a procedure to help fix his heart, but complications arose, and now Jaron is waiting for a heart transplant. We were told yesterday that Jaron's moved to the top of the transplant list, and that means that the Jasper family could receive a phone call at any moment saying that the heart is ready. Ivan Jasper is here today. However, if he receives that phone call, he will leave to be with his son, and Ashley Ingram will take over. The Navy team continues to keep the Jasper family in their prayers and is wearing bracelets that say Jaron Strong and stickers on the back of their helmets. We are here today, all Jaron Strong. Well, thank you, Sheehan, and Jack Abey thinking score. Take the top off the defense and plunge into the red zone. Hooks up with Daryl Bonner. Big play, Bonner, and the co-captain delivers. And big play, Bonner just goes right up the seam and is wide open. One of the harder balls to catch and throw are the ones where you don't have anybody around the offensive player. Great job by A.B. and Bonner. Looked like he was going to pop all the way and just got drugged down. 56 yards for Bonner, whose first score came against Notre Dame last year. Even his dad, Darrell Sr., occasionally calls him Big Clay. The toss, Trey Walker twisted down inside of the 10. Roderick Teamer Jr. in there on the hit, a gain of about four. Yeah, last possession after a big play, Navy got down in the same general vicinity and didn't finish it off through that interception. It's usually their M.O. You get a big play, you get in the red zone, this team will give you a touchdown. That was on third and 11 from the 13 when A.B. threw the pick. Last year, one touchdown, four interceptions. This year, one touchdown of the year, two picks in a game plus. Go to high on the dive. Balance. Touchdown. Nice job up front by Lindsey and Hawk on that left side. Linebacker goes down and goes out. High starts to look like he's going to go down. You see him put down John, put that little kickstand down, that arm prevented him from going down and let him get in the end zone and get that touchdown. Had a hip injury against Houston last year that cost him some time. Ran for seven touchdowns, though. The second on the team at yards. That's his first score of 2017. A crisp one minute and 16 seconds. Bennett Mooring out of the hold of Randy Beggs. And the point after, true. A pick on the first possession, a score in rapid order on the second. Three plays, 63 yards, and pay dirt. Navy has its first home lead, 7-0. Navy on top, 7-zip, a very rapid drive down the field as we take a look at your keys to the game, Randy. What do you say? Yeah, Tulane can't afford the turnovers, just can't do that. And they've got to be option masters on the defensive side. So far, you've seen them struggle doing that. A.B. has made some nice decisions. One not so nice with the interception. And how about the striker? That's a position, a new hybrid here at Navy. We're going to show you a little more extensively as Tulane gets the ball because it's uh, part defensive back, part linebacker. It's almost like an NFL position because of all the spread that happens in the American Conference and all the wild offenses. So much running done here today, but a lot of passing in the league. Bennett Mooring for the kick. Sherman Beatty, Devin Glenn, the return men. Beatty was over 800 kick return yards on his career from about his three. Sideways run to the edge. 
A nice run back, breaking the plane to the 30. But finally, mark him out at around the 34 yard line. Billiard. No yield from Sean Williams. Free safety. Stalls him after a couple. Taryn Ankalad, the subject of our GMC game changer. Big time impact against Grambling in game one. A couple of touchdowns. The bell cow of the wide receivers, according to offensive coordinator Doug Roos. Also the most consistent hands of that group. Play fake. Banks steps into it. He has a cannon. That one finds nobody. Willie Fritz says he can throw at 75 yards with accuracy. Sometimes that's not a good thing. Because not very often guys can get that far down the field if you're going to get that kind of protection. You know, we mentioned the striker position. Thompson, number 11, is at the striker on the field here. He's actually lined up right here. Here's Thompson at striker. Last play, he blitzed, kind of a check blitz. That makes him more of a linebacker. Now he's in coverage. Banks on third and eight. The left side toss. Charles Jones the second. That's a big guy for Jared Ryan to bring down at 5'11", 198. This is going to be the 41-yard line. It'll be fourth down at a yard. Nice job by Thompson coming off his play because the tackle wasn't made. But Thompson comes back. Now he's a linebacker the way he tackles. So you're a safety the way you blitz kind of. Now that time he's a linebacker because of the way he tackles. Tulane going to punt it. Versatility already paying off. Zach Block been out there a few times already. Gets this one off. Another fair catch wave by Craig Scott. Maybe we'll have it at its own 20. Chris High. Forward progress seems silenced. Grabbed around the ankles and double teamed up top. Rajon Marbley part of that swarm that engulfed high. But he was hit in the face on the 21-yard line. He didn't go down until he got almost to the 26-yard line. So five yards after getting met in the hole. And remember, we saw Josh Walker with that right knee heavily wrapped in ice. Who had figured to have about a 50-50 split in terms of touches with high at the fullback spot. Baby keeps. And here it's the 31. Rajon Marbley in there on the contact. And depending upon the spot, that will be good for a first down. So that'll stop the clock momentarily. And they'll let it tick away. Nothing eats a quarter faster than a couple of option offenses. This contest has the option flying, but it's the air attack of Navy that led to a very quick score after one quarter of play a seven nothing advantage for the Miz. Zach Aby not gun shy about throwing early and there's another drop Daryl Bonner twice now has been hit on the hands this time with nobody near him and could not contain it in this offense you do have wide receivers but it's stunning how often it's the a backs it's those slot back type positions that get featured down the field throwing the ball and Bonner's had a couple of instances now where he's just been a little bit shorter than the pass. And they no longer have Jameer Tillman which Ivan Jasper said might be a good thing. Keeps defenses a little more honest and they also have the bruising run game of Chris High. He is delivering some wallop contacts. Franklin. Jared Franklin Stop. Peter Woolard on the wrong side of that rumble to the 38 gain of seven. And there's the man calling the shots Ivan Jasper the OC who is she in chronicled earlier is dealing with his own unique battles away from the field as well and prayers go out to him his son Jaron and the entire Jasper family 50 percent early on third down A.B. keeps and he's got it Luke Jackson part of the group to fourth the QB Roderick Teamer seems a little banged up doubled over in is Nelson Smith the true freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he blocks for A.B. A little misdirection. A.B. Swerve has the 48 gain of five. Also out there on the field is Malcolm Perry, number 10. 
at A back. Remember, it was Perry last year came out of the stands. Was, was pulled out, first guy to do the march on and actually play in a game. <laughs> and that was because he had played JV the day before, hadn't practiced during the course of that week all that much. Not much here on second and five. Golden Corral, a proud supporter of Armed Forces football. Patrick Johnson, oh, yeah. not so proud a supporter as he disrupted Nelson Smith. So here's third and four. This is two down territory near the middle of the field where you saw Tulane punt it. I fully expect Navy to go for it on fourth if they don't get it here on third. Led the country in fourth down percentage a couple of years ago. Everybody tight to the line. Navy follows. Ball's loose. Was he down? Tulane scoops it up. Teamer. After a midshipman collapsed upon him, he That's races it back. That's a fumble. No, no, no whistles. Nobody pointing at the ground. Nothing. That's a fumble and return. They'll review it. Tucks it on the follow. I don't know. It looked like there. That ball came bouncing out of there after he hit the ground. Let's have another look at it. See if we can slow it down a little bit better. When's the ball start coming out? No, it's out big time. Oh, that was a really nice play coming from the backside by Luke Jackson, knocking that thing out. It's out. Great play by Jackson. Kobe Neen in the point after. He had missed a couple last week. He converts here. The kick is good. So two I turnovers early for, for Navy. Navy Zach Avey with a pick, a fumble, and Teamer takes it 51 yards for a score. Tulane ties it up. Tied at seven, Navy and Tulane, early second quarter. And nothing new for Tulane, a pick now in nine of its last 11 games, and last year trailed only Minnesota, second in the FBS, with 15 fumble recoveries, something their defensive coordinator, Jack Curtis, said they work on every single day. Trey Walker has his bit of an edge. And gets yanked by his teammates for an extra view. A true team effort on specials. Ball down. Let's check in with Sheehan Stanwood Birch. Guys, not good news for Navy's offense. Number 24, Josh Walker, the fullback, is out for the rest of the game. He's been icing his right knee on the training table. Now he's being fitted for crutches, but he will not be returning. Well, thank you, Sheehan. And Chris High is going to carry. Most of the action in the wake of his absence runs through multiple hits before Jared Franklin finally takes care of him at the 30. It'll be a loss of six. You can see the right knee wrapped up for the converted slot back who missed most of the spring with injury. Now that's more pressure on the senior out of Oklahoma City. Tulane offense or defense showing a, a good mastery of the options for his play. Avey. Looking long for Perry, a little too long. Just beyond his outstretched fingertips, Perry a game changer with his speed. Uh, he had he had a receiver open. Again, the ball thrown just a little bit taller than the receiver could get it. You talk about straining every single sinew in your body to get that layout as long as you can, but not quite enough. Micah Thomas, linebacker for Navy, said he's the hardest man to tackle on the team. Said you give him three inches, he'd have Christian McCaffrey. Navy on third down. Gets nothing. Thwarted at the 30 by Rajon Marbley, who's been all over the field for too late. And not the response you were looking for after a giveaway that led to a score. No, Navy offense just a little bit out of sorts. And give some credit to this two-lane defense. It's not like they're uh, unfamiliar with the option. And they do have a history, at least as of this last matchup last year, of giving them fits. The turnovers were part of that. Maybe gave it away a couple of times last year. If holding somebody at 285 yards rushing is giving them fits. The total yardage is the, the bigger number. Owen White's punch. Tulane lets it roll down by Navy at about the 33. We'll step aside, tied at seven. 10.58 to go in the second, a deadline. Had a sack last week in his first career start. 
Motion on first down. Blitz. Play fake. Banks hit as he launches. Incomplete. Sean Williams physical with Terran Ancalad as the ball arrived. It's Hudson Sullivan who pierced into the backfield. Here comes Thompson on the blitz. He was in that semi-slot position. He gets blocked. But Sean Williams coming in that safety position does a really nice job of breaking up that pass. When you're aggressive, you've got to have guys make plays like that. Thanks. Tuck and Keith sheds the first hitter. Sullivan there again, along with a couple of others. Sherman Beatty is entered at running back as they tend to the primary signal call. Maybe showing pressure on third and fourth. Robertson emotions. Beatty, the dive. And he's got the first down, two yards shy of midfield. Micah Thomas and Sean Williams combined on the lick. How about this? You're going to go right behind the quarterback and then straight ahead. Look at the blocking on that left side. They're set up well for it. Little combination block. Center Cruz block, blocks down and washes everybody down, and that's where the run was made. Ten-yard run. Go right back to it. Another seam. And again, it's a pair of midshipmen, Jared Ryan and Sean Williams, forced to contain Beatty, gets to the 43. Nice advantage to know you can come back inside. Junior Diaz doing a good job again, two plays in a row. Play comes back inside late, and he's making a nice block when that happens. Nine-yard run. The fullback dive was a concern for Dale Pearson, Navy's defensive coordinator. So that was the element they had to stop. And this time they do. Beatty is nothing thanks to the striker, Jerry Thompson, a loss of a couple. Thompson coming out from the outside, breaking this play up. Good linebacker sees stuff coming to him. He's going to break up the block in front of him. By doing that, by going low and breaking up the block, he also breaks up the runner. Third down and three. Rick Neuheisel ran uh, something, an offense similar to this at UCLA. It was called the pistol. Oh, my goodness. They guess wrong. The hard contact and frees up Brantley. Shrugs off Jared Ryan. And he's popped inside of the five. Brantley, fresh off the pine, pierces the defense for 42 yards. And when you run this style offense and you guess, just like the Navy option, you guess wrong, you pay big. Navy seemed to be guessing fullback. They tackled the heck out of the fullback. Well, the quarterback kept it and wisely pulled that thing out. Good decision by Brantley. Good eyes. The turn of phrase we heard from many Navy defenders and what would be needed to stop the option attack of Tulane. The bigger back, Darius Bradwell's in. He goes out wide. Design quarterback keep. The blocks hold. The plunge. Touchdown. And Tulane takes the lead. No back, so there's no fake, just a slight hesitation. And you take advantage of some nice blocking up front with the left side of your offensive line or the right side of your offensive line with Briggs Jr. and McLeod washing things down with Diaz inside. Kobe Neenan point after. Not automatic, missed two of six last week. He said it was mechanical. And this one no good. That's his third extra point miss in just two games. Well, the offensive line for Tulane, they've got a rhythm. The offense for Navy, not so much. Thirteen to seven, Tulane has the lead on the Navy midshipman. The Green Wave looking to go two and zero for the first time since 2002, just the third time in over 40 years, and they've taken the lead without their starting quarterback, Jonathan Banks. Maybe we saw Banks land a little adversely there in his stomach slash ribs area on that ball. He's still holding that same area of his chest since he got off the field. So Banks off, Jonathan Brantley just ran for his first career touchdown. Now the in stride, Trey Walker, Bit of a bad judgment. 
And it'll be tough field position here. Even though he runs through a couple of tackles, he has the 17 as we check in with Sheehan. Guys, you saw Jonathan Banks being walked off the field, but when he was on the sidelines, the training staff was attending to him, putting pressure on his ribs and upper abdomen, but he was really grimacing, almost having a hard time getting a deep breath and wasn't even able to celebrate the touchdown was in so much pain. Well, thank you, Sheehan. And Banks, who was called exactly the type of quarterback that Tulane is looking for by Willie Fritz. He had beaten out Jonathan Brantley in spring ball for the primary quarterback duties. Well, that was exactly the kind of drive that Willie Fritz, the coach of Tulane and this football team needed that Brantley just gave him. Chris High looking for a response, runs into Zachary Harris. Gets the 21, a gain of four. Today's first and 10 line brought to you by Golden Corral. Navy could use some first downs here. Is this a game, Randy, where time of possession does matter more than most? It can when you start getting a little frustrated when you're not moving the ball the way that you're used to doing it. And the time of possession can start playing on the other team's favor if you have the kind of style of play that Navy has. A.B. on second down. Able to connect Tyler Carmona. Perry a block, Carmona the dash. 79 yards for a touchdown. John, we've seen two or three of those passes just be a little too tall for the receivers. Well, this time the receiver is six foot two. Doesn't have to be too tall. It's thrown right in the right spot. Look at Perry come in number 10. Makes a little bit of a block. Not a big one, but that's all Carmona Car needed to pop for the rest of that play. So they tie it up, both scoring drives. Incredibly quick. Five total plays for the two touchdowns. The go-ahead extra point is good. Bennett Mooring connects, and Navy in a heartbeat has the lead right back thanks to the 79-yard touchdown pass. Then the Amazon Lobos Club up 14 to 13 after the break. Our CBS Sports Network studio in New York. The Rams truck halftime report. Brent Stover, Houston Nut, Christian Fourier standing by. A one-point difference at the break. Navy squeaking past Tulane in the first stanza. The home opener for the mids, the conference opener for both teams. John Sadak, the Hall of Famer. Randy Cross, turnovers key in the first as we break down the first half stats brought to you by Stouffer's Fit Bowls. Yeah, there's no doubt, John. I mean, especially uh, the way Navy performed. Zach Aby had an interception early. He had a fumble return for a touchdown early. Um, Tulane did a very nice job of limiting generally the Navy offense. Now, Navy returned and had some very big plays uh, on the offensive side. So, when you look at the stats going into this second half, you know, just statistically, you'd say, oh, it's not a bad game overall. But I tell you what, though, the Navy offense, not much of a rhythm, which is not the usual MO for them, especially early in the season. And defensively, they've had a few issues uh, with, it, with this offense of Tulane. So for Tulane, offensively, stay clean. Defensively, just keep doing what you're doing. And for Navy, clean up your mistakes. Those interceptions and whatnot, you can't keep obviously doing that. But that gun option, you're seeing some success, you know, with especially since Brantley's come into the game, you better master that, especially the quarterback side of it, because he starts pulling that thing and gashing it for yards, you're going to start guessing, and that's always deadly. A lot of two back heavy looks likely. Tulane had won the toss and deferred. So Sherman Abatey, midway deep, takes a knee, and we go down to the sidelines for word on what the two head coaches had to say with Sheehan. Well, guys, as you can imagine, Navy coach Kenny Amatololo not happy with the turnover, said, frankly, that they killed us. They let them Tulane back in this game. They have to have better ball security. And for Willie Fritz on Tulane, he did tell me that Jonathan Banks, the starting quarterback, likely will not play in this second half. But overall, he was pretty pleased, like the way they played defensively and offensively, need to execute a little bit better, but just was pretty happy with this team performance. Well, thank you, Sheehan, and certainly he knows success. A couple of junior college national titles, a few FCS championship game appearances. Brantley. 
Able to stretch it out. Zips out of bounds with escort from Sean Williams. Gets about five yards back. And that's not a bad first effort coming off a, a stumble start when you get the penalty on your first play. Now eventually, they're going to have to put this ball in the air. But I think short term here with Brantley, they're so much better off. Just use this option, get a guess, try to try to force a guess if you can by the defense. Second and 16, the flick to the sideline for Taryn Ancalon. His defense for Navy, we've seen a lot of running out of Tulane so far, but we've talked about the aggressive nature of this defense that Dale Pearson's got going on for Navy. The corners, a lot of man, and that's something you didn't ever see out of this defense was man defense. He said he'd have to go back to the Dick Bumpus days. The last employed that much man to man. Brian, Brian Jones's favorite defensive coordinator ever. And here's some great defense in the backfield. Swarming DJ Palmore and Anthony Villalobos. A loss of 10. Well, Villalobos cuts him off, but it was DJ Palmore coming from the outside linebacker position around from the left side of your screen. Just steamrolling the right tackle. The right tackle for Tulane, Keyshawn McLeod, that you had talked about earlier. Dale Pearson told us that we would see more and more via Lobos. He had about 15 snaps last week against this offense. He would play more, and here's a poor punt by Zachary Block. On the Tulane side of the 45, takes a Navy roll to the 43. Trey Walker is the deep back. Massive misdirection. A.B. After spinning out of one hit, has three more swarms. Sean Wilson, the first to make contact. It was a heck of a misdirection. You're absolutely right, John. But it was also a massive lack of protection. Because when A.B. comes around and looks down the field, he sees green helmets and green pants with white jerseys all around him. And he didn't have anywhere to go with the ball as quickly as he needed to go uh, get away with it. Could have gotten it out to Scott, but by then he was running for his life. A.B. follows high. Thunders a path to the 41. Jared Franklin with the stop. So here's third down. Navy, remember, had outstanding field position right around this spot. And, and keep in mind something John mentioned earlier about Navy being one of the better fourth down teams in the country. Don't put it past Ken Niamatololo right here to have two plays ready to go from Ivan Jasper, his offensive coordinator, right there nearest the wall with the hat on. Third and nine, the late pitch. They did not employ that much in the first, and the field was there. John Brown, the third, bangs out of bounds as he gets the first, ripping off 11. Well, this will this will make Ivan Jasper upstairs, the offensive coordinator, smile. That was a decision that had to be made quickly, and a pitch that had to be made really, really quickly. It was done by Zach Aby. You haven't seen Navy threaten the perimeter very often in this game. That play right there tends to leave a mark in a defensive mind because they don't like getting flanked. Four of nine on third down. So now run back inside after the pitch outside. Luke Jackson, Roderick Teamer combined on the stop. And around the 27, gain of four. Sort of like boxing, John. You know, you, you, you're looking for the hook, the outside hook, and they give you the inside, just that direct right hand. That's what the fullback can be. So just when you're looking and you're thinking about the hook, bang, high, right inside with the straight right, gets you a good chunk of yards. A.B. follows high again. He's got the 22, Perry Nickerson, along with Rajon Marbley on the contact. We haven't heard a lot about Nickerson since the game's infancy when he had the pick. And here's something, last couple plays here, a little bit more of a rhythm to this offense. Less hesitation, less checking to the sideline, more of just running and going, which is something that I think suits these guys maybe a little bit more. They're always going to be a team that's going to check back, but they're not letting that play clock get down too low. Third and one. A.B. trying to find the seam. And he got contacted on the shoulder. Looks like they'll give him the 20 and a half yard line. Roderick Teamer is in there on contact. Let's see where this is spotted. 
the spot where it looks like it's going to be a first down. They're going to move these sticks. Indeed, they put it square between the 20 and the 21, so a conversion for Navy that, remember, is without Josh Walker, who was supposed to split 50 50 at fullback with Chris High. Nelson Smith has been the extra man in, the true freshman. They go to High on the fullback dive, right into the clutches of Quinlan Carroll and Jared Franklin. They're in the red zone. A lot of that fullback run has been there because of the blocking inside. Second down. They fake the pitch. AB keeps now the pitch near side. Perry spins. The elusive Malcolm Perry. All the way to the one and a half. DeAndre Williams, the contact, 16 yards for the elusive Malcolm Perry. AB keeps. AB on that right side. Still going. Officials Did he drop start it? in. Touchdown. <laughs> Offensive lineman's dream. Pick up the ball, Andrew, Andrew Wood. I think there was a fumble in there, and Wood recovered it. When you're fighting, the ball comes out. Zach Aby does fumble that ball. But I believe it's 61 Wood that comes out of that scrum with the ball. Point after from Bennett Mooring. Yeah, that's the second fumble. You think Coach Camp's being specific about that? Welcome on back to Annapolis. Touchdown offensive lineman Andrew Wood recovers a fumble in the end zone. Chase Kershen had knocked it free, and Ken Niamatololo not happy with quarterback Zach Aby. Two fumbles for Aby and an interception. His teammate was able to plop upon the most recent miscue and recover for a Navy score. The first offensive lineman touchdown for Navy since Jake Zuzik, 2012 against Air Force. That was when Keenan Reynolds put it down. Aby has nothing. Keenan. Ken Niamatololo rather fired up of late. We go down to Sheehan's stand with Birch for more reaction to what happened last week. Well, guys, Coach Niamatololo let Zach know last week in the Florida Atlanta game how unhappy he was with some of his decision making. And we saw that on screen. And we get the unique opportunity of meeting with the coaching staff before their home games. And we get to see Coach Niamatololo in a different light. He's always professional. But I describe him mostly as calm, which is probably how most people in the outside world see him. On the game field, he loves to show his emotion, but he told us this past weekend, a woman at church who probably only sees that calm demeanor came up to him and alluded to the replays of him yelling at quarterback Zach A.B. and said, the coach said the woman looked at him like he was a lunatic. Jonathan Brantley at quarterback, motion from Darnell Mooney. Brantley, looking long, incomplete. Jabril Clewis closest to it, and the man with the big arm is on the sidelines. Jonathan Banks as we check in with Sheehan. Guys, Jonathan came out in street clothes and still appears to be in a lot of pain, taking some deep breath, clutching what appears to be an ice pack underneath his shirt on his right hand upper ridge side, but just rocking back and forth, trying to watch his team play, but definitely in a lot of pain. And Hilliard sparked in the backfield in this direction. Hudson Sullivan with a pop. Haven't seen that gun option look. We got the single back there. Everyone bites on that. Brantley gets some nice yards. That's something we saw in that first drive that set up that last touchdown. They got nine on second down. They need six on third down. Only two conversions thus far. Four man rush with a stunt. Double team as soon as the ball flew into Ankalad's hands. It's going to be close, but it's going to be short. And you're on the 26 yard line. Your opponent's 26 yard line. Setting up fourth and one. Not the situation or the time you probably want to go for it. 
If you've practiced a bark kind of a situation, tell you guys to hold your water and don't jump. I'm going to try to pull him off. It was the perfect time for it. Needing a yard. Helmet flew off. Progress looks sufficient. DJ Palmore, the tackle. If it is sufficient, it's just barely. Tulane sideline vehemently believes that it has it without measurement. The ball inched up, and they will move the chains. So a big fourth down and one attempt. Late stage third quarter. That's pushing all the chips into the middle of the table right there, especially where they were. It's got to give your young or your offense a lot of uh, a lot of confidence. Back in that gun option look, that pistol. Brantley gives to Hilliard. Right up the gut of the defense, plunging to the 34. Now I'm not sure if you don't stay in that look. You keep giving them that look of the quarterback with that back right behind them. I haven't seen them stop that a whole lot so far from the end of the second half on. They've rotated personnel some as the game's worn on. They have Charles Jones the second in as that H back. It's both Beatty and Hilliard here. Two of their primary ball carries. Beatty's first touch in a while. He doesn't have much on that left side, but second effort. He didn't get the memo, John. Dave Tolentino had the first chance and he ran right through him. Justin Norton eventually fell on his back, thwarted at the 40, moves the chains, another first down. Yes, we've seen that a couple times out of both defenses, kind of incomplete efforts when it comes to tackling, and suddenly the back comes squirting out the other side for extra yards. Hilliard, the lone true back, motion from Lewis off the play fake. Brantley. Wide open target hooks up with Darnell Mooney who runs through another arm tackle. That was Tyrus Wooten, the quarterback, who whiffed on the first attempt and finally gets him after 25 yards. Well, that little uh, hop in their step, that confidence from that fourth down get, starting to pay off dividends a little for Willie Fritz and company. That's a pretty good uh, gamble to do what they did. That takes some strength. I don't care what they say on the scorecard, what your weight is. You are strong to be able to shrug somebody off like that. Darius Bradwell, a rather strong back as well. A hard pounding involving Anthony Villalobos. The cloud hails from Port Charlotte, Florida, right in the eye of the storm as the hurricane hurdles through Florida. Jackson Pittman, Tyler Sales combined to bash Darius Bradwell. Tulane was ultra thin on the offensive line last year. But they played their season finale against UConn and avoided the program's first winless season in conference play since they were in the SEC in the 60s. They traveled six total offensive linemen. Two plays here. This is two down. This is four down territory. You go for it on your own 26. You go for it back to in this end territory. Off the pitch play. Maybe gets low on contact against Dontrell Hilliard. A flag is out. Nice Sean job Williams. by Hilliard hurtling forward, rolling forward to almost or get that first down. And apologies, no penalty here, fourth down and one. Yeah, no doubt you're going for it here. In fact, they called two plays in the last huddle. Quarterback keep. First down run by Jonathan Brantley. DJ Palmore swallowed him up at around the 16, gate of 10. You give it, you give it, you give it, you take that sucker out of there. Man, you got everybody diving on that fullback. Palmore's just there at the end that, to, to make that tackle. Brantley set up really well for a nice call right there by the coaches to give him that run. Last year, it was Navy that roared back in the fourth at Tulane to find a victory after trailing most of the day. Tulane will have the ball in good real estate down 10 as we shoot to the fourth. The sights of the day, Navy on top 23 to 13, outgaining Tulane 307 to 205 
in total offense. But Kenny Montalolo knows turnovers have been pivotal. Willie Fritz and his two lane club, a second red zone possession. The first resulted in a quarterback run for a score. And here are the rumble. Nets yardage for Dontrell Hilliard inside of the 10. Time of possession goes to Tulane. Big plays for Navy, which has been grand when leading after three under Kendi Amatololo. And when this defense has been aggressive for Navy, it's been really good. When it's guessed against this offense, it's been gashed. Bradwell pounds to the five, gain of four. That'll move the chains. It'll be first and goal. DJ Palmore the contact. What are the options for Tulane that best fit in this part of the field? First and goal from the five. You keep doing what you've been doing. The option, the give, the pull, the quarterback key. Only about a yard there. Bradwell, who's the big bruiser at 6'1", 225. Hudson Sullivan, right about the same size of linebacker, stops it. This offensive line up front has done a very nice job on the running side of the game. And Brantley has done a really nice job of a little prestidigitation there with the ball, making him guess. On collab motion, tries to distract Hilliard to the one yard line. Down in goal, Dave Tolentino in there on contact. Did they have John LeGlue on the other side of the line there? Down and goal. A lot of pressure on the inside of a defense, and you spread out like this. Got trips formation to the right. On the ground. And the Navy defense cannot hold. Tulane breaks the plane. Touchdown, Greenway. Don Trail Hilliard, his first rushing score of the campaign. Yeah, nice job up front, especially on the left side there with LeBlue and Dublin. Diaz, who we've mentioned quite a few times in this game, doing a really nice job setting up that touchdown. The offense is on the field. They're going to go for two here, Randy. Your thoughts? I, I don't have any problem with this personally. You're on the road. Give it, a, give it a go. You can, you can get a lead with the next possession. Little flick. Ball Did he reach it? Touchdown! Before the ball came free, he was in for the two-point conversion. And they make it a two-point game. Charles Jones the second with the conversion grab. Uh, Jones does a fabulous job of reaching out. He's in bounds. And look at that, right onto the pylon just inside to get that two point conversion. Makes it 23 21. And the ball is now firmly in Navy's court offensively. Now, what can you do against this two lane defense? Can you hold on to it? Can you run the ball? Heck, can you do what Tulane just did? Tulane just crammed the ball down Navy's throat. Can they return the favor? Tulane after a touchdown and successful two-point conversion. A touchback on the kick. Tossed to high, whose balance was not clean as he received the ball, and he'll lose a couple of yards. Zachary Harris, Cameron Sample with the hit. The Baker Mayfield said that it could be a national championship playoff type preview tonight for his Sooners. A little early for that. But I appreciate his enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a really important possession for Tulane's defense. I think you might want to think it's Navy's, but momentum by the offense. They scored. You get them back, the ball back. That's a big deal. Navy on the keep. Chase Kershaw, who had the forced fumble, remember on Navy, recovered by his right tackle Andrew Wood for a touchdown, got the stop. 
You know that touchdown and two point conversion got that whole sideline for Tulane pretty excited. Can his defense get Navy off the field to put that offense back on the field? Granted where they are on the field third and two pretty significant here from the 33. You get fourth and one Kenny Matalolo and his staff are liable to go for it. Maybe keeps and he moves the chains moot point Rajon Marbley the tackle. If you're writing a prescription for the Navy football team what do you need right here. You need a slow methodical efficient brutal drive for the Navy offense nothing spectacular not 50 yard runs just multiple fours and fives first downs and points. Navy. Nice contact. Zachary Harris, who had just one tackle last week, rips him down. Today's first down line brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Seven yards needed here. Chris High, still that deep fullback. No Josh Walker, lost to injury in the first half, and his right knee heavily iced up. Maybe again contacted by Harris. So another third down approaches as Harris continues to find Aby. Yeah, it was a nice job by Harris. He saw the full, saw that ball being pulled, was not fooled by the fullback, and zeroed in immediately on Aby. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 400, 150. Backside pressure, dangerous pass. Incomplete. It is ruled a forward pass. Luke Jackson with that immense pressure right up in AB's face. Yeah, it was Luke Jackson because he's right there as AB goes to turn to throw that ball. He's right in his kitchen. And that ball came out there, kind of knuckled out there. And AB's lucky, A, that the ball wasn't caught and they'd have lost all that extra yards. But mission accomplished right now for this two lane defense. They're getting their offense on a roll, the ball back. High school rugby player. Owen White, and Jacob Robertson, that's out of bounds. Giant stop for the Tulane defense in a two point game. But Tulane gets the ball right back for its offense, and a field goal could net the Green Wave a road lead. And you can tell just by looking at this Tulane sideline and their head coach, Willie Fritz, they are pumped. Dontrell Hilliard. First down run, and he's had some success up the gut. There to Micah Thomas, breaks the plane of midfield. There's the sophomore signal caller. His numbers today after coming in for the banged up banks. And when I say execution, you know, offensively, hey, Tulane is blocking them up. These backs are breaking tackles. And when Brantley has the chance, he pulls that ball out, has gotten some nice little. Completions and he's also had some nice runs. Fakes the baby, keeps, fakes the pitch, keeps again. Brantley has himself a first. Sean Williams, the tackle. Watch the bite on the fullback. Heck, more than half the defense is chasing the running back on the fake. Brantley pulls that ball out and he runs the same way every single time. It's what I like about how he runs this option. This kid looks like he's getting the ball and keeping the ball every time he runs it. Off the fake, batted down, line of scrimmage. Anthony Villalobos gets up in the air and plays a little volleyball. Now Villalobos doing exactly what Dale Pearson talked about him having the ability to do. Micah Thomas got the second piece of it, but it was Villalobos knocking it askew at the very beginning. Second down to 20. Zigzag run doesn't net a whole lot. Nice answer possession by the defense of Navy. Navy got put in an adverse situation. Now third and about 14, 15 yards. This is not two down territory unless you get inside the 35 yard line. Get inside the 35. You can do it. Otherwise, you pin Navy's offense back and see if 
your defense can stuff them down there. And Tulane does have two timeouts to work with. Navy team that's giving it away some today. Extra man comes. On Kalad. Inside of that 35. Does this change the decision making to the 32? You're going for it here. In fact, my guess is they called two plays in the huddle. So they've got a play ready right here. That's why they're getting right to the line of scrimmage. We get inside the 35. Here's the play we're going to run. They've known from the jump. They got 15 yards to the 32. Fourth down has been commonplace today. Design quarterback run to the wide side. Let your quarterback use his feet. Brantley. Knocked down. Nearly intercepted by DJ Powell. Nice job by DJ Palmore. You talk about guys spying quarterbacks. DJ Palmore was staring at Brantley the whole way. 45, Palmore. Look at him right there. He's looking at the quarterback. Brantley tries to throw it around him. Palmore's not having any of that. Had a receiver open. The first down was there, but unfortunately for two lanes, so was DJ Palmore. Palmore, the other co-captain on this team, along with Darrell Bonner. So now can Navy's offense work the final 422? Navy keeps. Just blocking and tackling here, Navy. Very meat and potatoes kind of a situation for them. You don't have to be cute. Remember the story about the five points of the ball with Ivan Jasper and A.B.? Everybody that touches the ball squeezes the ball. And if you have to put two hands on it, put two hands on it. But the last thing you want to do is cough that sucker up in this situation. Ivan Jasper asked A.B., show me a football, his first recruiting visit, and taught him how he would carry it at Navy. He remembers the credit. Navy finds that edge. The block's there, and it takes multiple Green Wave men, led by Perry Nickerson. That'll move the chains to the 45, gate of nine. That's the difference between being the recruit and being the recruiter. Recruit remembers the football lesson. The recruiter remembers mom's crab gym. Though he does also remember that he's never been given it after since he got that first dose. Yeah, he still wants some more. Maybe now over 100 yards on the ground. He already has 100 in the air. Kenny Amatololo. Last time his offense had it, they went for it on fourth and 12 at the Tulane 36. And time on the clock is oxygen to Tulane. Not much for A.B. Zachary Harris, Rajon Marbley. It'll be a loss of a yard. We make a pile in the backfield. It can be a little hard to get around. And A.B. and company could not get around that pile that was made in the backfield. That's why they lost yards there. A.B. gets a few. And set up second, uh, third, and seven. Another timeout by Tulane. Third and seven. Chris High, the fullback. Everybody tight to the line. Misdirection to Perry. Gets through that first hit. And he's denied at the 49, Zachary Harris. What a nice job. Just not biting on the backside. Luke Jackson. Luke Jackson caused a fumble earlier, and there he's there in case of that little trickeration coming around the outside. He wouldn't let happen. So it's been three years since a regular season loss for Navy in this stadium. Awful lot of guys on the field. Too many guys on the field. Snap it. Here's the punt. From the seven. And that flag down. Well, it's about to be fourth and one. Late five-yard line. There were at least, oh, I, I'm going to be nice and say 14 Tulane players on the field there by the time that ball was snapped.
What works into your thought process with a penalty like this? For me personally, I decline the penalty, give them the ball, put my defense on the field. More than 11 players on the field on the receiving team. The penalty is declined. First down. Kenny Matalolo says the same. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you've got a defense that last possession or so has been pretty good. Um, why do any more gambling? I think it's a smart call by, by Coach Ken. You've got him backed up. Has Kenny Montalolo changed his mind here? Decided to put him in fourth and one. Of course, if you get him in fourth and one, what's the what's the worst thing you can do? Try to get him to jump off sides. Two lane offense is out there. So indeed, yep. So that means Navy's going to put its offense out there and try to get one yard. It would basically seal the game. Tulane out of timeouts. Fourth so and a short one. They could have made Tulane go 98 yards with no timeouts. Instead, the choice go for it on fourth and one at the 46. Navy keeps. And the push from his line, he's got it. First down, Navy, and barring a bad exchange, that's your ball game. Yep, no timeouts left. That's going to end it. There you go. There's a little enthusiasm, enthusiasm out of Coach Ken. Conference opener. His team has won eight of nine under his watch, entering this his tenth year. Now they can go victory. And Zach Avey. The bent knee as Navy will hold on and survive Tulane. Navy can run its record to 2 0 overall, 1 0 in league play, and Tulane. Will fall to one and one, zero and one in league play this year. Now four and twenty-one all time in the American. And more importantly for Kenny Matalolo and, and Navy, they have a week off. They are back on the field here at Marine Corps Memorial uh, against Cincinnati on the twenty-third. So it's almost like back to camp, back to fundamentals for this coming week. I believe that we will win the champ. That's growing. The Amatololo now with the headset off, still coaching. Maybe stumbled a little bit before he went into that last knee. But the number on the play clock is behind the number on the scoreboard for the clock clock. They can let those final seconds fade. Can the Amatololo and Navy hold on? A two point triumph over Tulane. The gamble pays off. They decide to go for it on fourth and one, convert. And it's another regular season home victory for Navy. Off to a 2 0 start. A lot of learning opportunities. For Kenny Montalolo and this staff to impart upon their players here over the next two weeks before they play again against Cincinnati. A lot of little spots to clean up. Some really good positive things, but some good things to pot to clean up too. Good job, Let's man. go downstairs. Coach. Sean Stanwick Birch with the head man, Kenny Montalolo. Thanks, Sean. Coach, it was a nail biter towards the end. Take us through the decision making going forward and fourth down. Well, you know, just we didn't want to give them the ball back. Our defense have been playing great all day, but we didn't want to put them in that position. I had some clock management issue there at the end, but I'm proud of our kids, especially our defense, found a way to get a W versus a really good team. Thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the win. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sheehan, and there the co-captain, DJ Palmore, double-digit tackles today. That's going to wrap things up for Randy Cross, Sheehan Stanwick Birch, and our entire crew. I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports.
So long from Annapolis. We'll take you now back to our New York studios. It's Inside College Football with Brent Stover, Houston Up, and Christian Fourier. They stand by as Navy rolls a 23-21 victory over Tulane.